Hey everybody, well welcome to today's Hoboken Free Church devotional. Uh, so happy Thursday and thanks for tuning in. I uh, hope everything's going well as we keep uh, going through this time of social distancing. So today we're going to be covering a passage at the end of Philippians, so Philippians 4, 14 to 23. Uh, and I'll read through that here in a moment and uh, then have a little bit of discussion kind of around some of the verses that are in that section. Uh, and I know that in this passage, the, the verse that's uh, just preceding this, Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me is a pretty well-known verse um, talking about Christ's provision and, and strength for us that's both physical and emotional. But uh, I think that people also kind of forget a bit about the final portion of this letter um, that Paul has written to the Philippians that we'll go through today, which I think also has some really great messages about uh, God's provision and, and seeing that mirrored in, in the church at Philippi and how they provided for Paul during his ministry and his faith in God through all of that. Uh, so here's today's passage really quickly. So Philippians 4, 14 to 23. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble. And you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. Even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once and again. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied having received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brothers who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. So this passage has a, a few different sections. First, Paul is thanking the Philippians for their continued support and continued gifts um, throughout his missionary work. Uh, and then his recognition of how the, the good use of those gifts can provide even more fruit uh, through his work uh, before finally having his greetings and farewell uh, to the church at the end of the passage. So in verses 14 to 16, uh, he really mentions that, you know, through all of these challenges and all of these troubles that he's experienced, the Philippians are the only ones that have kind of repeatedly supported him. So uh, he mentions even being in Thessalonica and still having the support from them. And I think that's a really important thing to remember from a, a support or a longevity standpoint with missions work, but also with the church as a whole, is that uh, having this longevity and this consistency of support um, really helps build a sense of fellowship towards this common purpose uh, of reaching others for the kingdom of God. And so, uh, you know, I think in Paul's letters, they're, they're able to kind of see this partnership kept going. So they're able to see that um, Paul is reporting back to the congregation saying, thank you for the gifts. Here's what I've been able to do with them. And they're kind of seeing these, you know, spiritual returns on their investment, if you will. Um, and, and that really goes for the, the missionary activity that we're talking about here in today's church, uh, but also even just the basic support of the church as a whole. Uh, and that this giving will have an investment for us to come back and to see the, the fruits of our work here. So, uh, I think for me, it's a good reminder that our tithes and offerings, you know, they, they go to the church, um, but more than that, they really go to a, a good use, uh, as Paul is starting to talk about here, um, and especially in times like right now where there's a high need around us. Uh, and I think to that end as well, uh, for me, verse 17 is actually one of my favorite parts of this whole passage, um, because here Paul notes that he's not merely seeking these gifts, which are appreciated and helpful, but he's really looking forward to the fruits that are produced from the good use of those gifts. Uh, and I think that's really, as I said a moment ago, it's important for us to keep giving as a church, but also to keep in mind that these gifts produce real tangible impacts in the lives of those around us that are being helped by the church. Uh, you know, this investment in those around us does have a real yield. Uh, you know, you hear to talk about uh, storing up a treasure in heaven. And I think that really that phrase or that concept really applies to a lot of what we see here. The church in Philippi was really great at doing this, uh, as Paul mentions in the letter. And of course, these gifts don't have to be financial. They can be time or energy or other talents that you may have uh, to support the church and the church's missions, but also to support those that are around us in need as well. Uh, again, storing up this heavenly treasure and this support. Now, in verse 18, Paul then acknowledges the gift from the church uh, and the sacrifices they made to bring that to him saying that he's well supplied, so what they've given him is enough, it's helpful, it's, it's going to keep him going. 
um, but also that it's pleasing to God. Uh, and so it's important to have that reminder that, um, you know, it's physically useful, but also this is something that God asks us to do uh, to further his kingdom. And, and so Paul is, is rightfully acknowledging that in this verse. And then I think verse 19 is probably the most well-known uh, of this whole passage um, in saying that God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Uh, and this is a really powerful verse since Paul is stating very clearly here that you know, God is going to take care of our needs according to Christ. Um, so he's stating his confidence that if we trust in Christ as our provider, we're not going to lack anything that's truly needed. Uh, and I think that the distinction between needs and wants for us uh, is a topic that we could spend you know, great length and great depth getting into, uh, discussing spiritual needs and wants or even physical needs and wants. But uh, primarily what I want to say here uh, is that God has really shown himself, I think, time and again to bless those who keep using their resources uh, to his purposes to achieve his glory. Uh, and that also ties back to this mention that Paul has of the fruits of those gifts uh, back in verse 17. So I think it's important for us to keep that in mind uh, and to remind ourselves of his provision daily uh, with Christ as our, as our provider. So Paul then starts to end his letter uh, with a doxology saying, to God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Uh, he's got some other final greetings to the rest of the folks in the church, uh, just acknowledging those that support as well as some greetings from, uh, from others around him. And for me, I really like the last verse in this passage too, which says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Uh, and for me, that's really a, a great reminder again that God's grace has done so much for us. Um, and I think it's one of the greatest things we could ever ask for or hope to have. You know, we, we think about everything that we've seen through, through our lives and, and our spiritual walks, and ultimately it really begins and ends with Christ's grace, right? I mean, his grace is what saved us, what made us Christians, made us able to have this relationship with him. Uh, it makes us who we are as a church, as a congregation, or a group of God's people. Uh, and I hope that it's also a reminder to guide our thoughts and actions, remembering that grace that he's shown for us, that we can show that same grace for others, uh, and sometimes for ourselves if it's needed to. Um, but with that, I hope this passage and this devotional have been an encouragement today for you guys. Uh, so please be sure to keep uh, plugged into the church, uh, especially the community during this time. So even though we're not able to meet in person, just uh, make sure to reach out to those around you and uh, stay involved with the community. So thanks very much for listening, and uh, God bless you all.